Welcome to Grand Overload. I'm Anthony, and AMD has released their new line of embedded processors, the Ryzen V1000 and the Epic 3000. The Ryzen V1000 and the Epic 3000 are the AMD's new embedded processors, and now I feel like now they're addressing the whole embedded market that is out there before they were targeting some of the embedded market but now they got the whole market they're really making sure that they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe at with intel in all of these categories that intel has had their um their processor line in for a while and amd addressing this is also great for let's say you know or good for desktop users you know or gaming users because this allows their products to get more out there more used and more opportunity to create more income for them so they can reinvest back into the company and develop even better processors and stay competitive going forward and i really really like that a lot that aim that amd has finally brought competition back because it's really fun watching you know intel and amd compete again as you know we're getting better and better products here and I hope that that continues for the you know future as well, which is important to me that I actually see that in the future. So uh, we'll see overall. But diving in more into these embedded products, the Ryzen V1000 also has not only the Zen architecture of the CPU side, but also has Vega on it, and it has up to 11 computes, uh, GPU compute units on it. And it has four cores and up to four cores and eight threads of these Zen cores as well. And you can have four cores or four cores, four displays at 4K also being ran off of these, uh, off of one of these chips as well. And so it has a lot of opportunity here, especially for digital signage, you know, st et cetera, stuff like that. I'll get into target applications here in a second. But as you see here, it's configurable from everything from 12 watts up to four, uh, 54 watts. And you, you got your four cores, eight threads. You have everywhere for three GPU units up to your 11 uh, GPU units as well. And they all can drive four displays. And you know some are going to be able to drive those better than others, right? But overall, you also have dual 10 gigabit Ethernet for the high-end um, chip as well. And this is allowing AMD basically go after a quite a few different areas and some of the target applications you can go after then is your marketing or market the gaming machines right so you got everything from casino arcade etc then you also have your industry controls and automation there's a lot to do there that amd can now take advantage of and address you know they were in some of these markets before but now they can really dive in and t basically go after every every application out there as well and then you also have the thin uh clients office automation you have digital signage you know every pos kiosk um you know quick service restaurants sales medical imaging communications infrastructure one area i wish that they would also put in is um enthusiast and i wish that they would kind of make like a little embedded board with you know e either a low end or a mid-tier uh processor here and just sell it out within this ryzen v1000 line that then enthusiast thing can go into i know it's not a big market but intel has some dev boards as well um and that this would be a nice opportunity for amd to kind of let users out there kind of tinker with their boards kind of maybe see what other applications are out there if people want to you know maybe go through and create their own application and it may it may eventually lead to a business opportunity for amd i don't know but i know i'd love to pick one up just to tinker with and just to maybe even set something up inside my house so that it could you know basically do some of the processing with some of these you know configurable devices down to like 12 watts i think it'd be a great opportunity to really set some stuff up on it for my own self and so we'll see if they ever come out with that but that's one thing that i wish they would also come out with and we shall see but the epic 3000 is really a compute powerhouse right now and as you can see here um it has everything up to 16 cores 32 threads and it goes all the way down to four cores and four uh, threads and so there's a wide range all the way through that you can do you have up to 64 pci gen 3 lanes you have up to eight 10 gigabit ethernet uh, connections and then you got uh four up to four channels of memory per 
per CPU and up to a terabyte of RAM per socket. So these can be quite powerful overall and it's going to be excited to see um, and you know you might not ever see what all what all applications in but I'm sure that they'll have some and they've already had some on their YouTube page I encourage you to look at those as well but some of those um, partners have you know said kind of what they're using these both the Ryzen V1000 and the Epic 3000 in products already but I really want to see what more products are out there I, I feel like this Epic 3000 has a, a lot of opportunity in the network and the storage world especially with all the PCI lanes and as well as those eight uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet connections as well and so you know networking you can you know like I said you can do a lot the highlight parallelization the software divine networks and all that stuff in between there um, and then you got high, you know, you got industry with the high floating points that you have on the Ryzen processors and the parallelization. So you got, you know, you can basically take and get a lot done with with some of these higher end Epic 3000 as well, which is going to be great. But then you have all the PCI Express, where so you got the Direct SATA and the NVMe support. It's really kind of amazing, you know everything they got stuffed into the one of these embedded processors and it's it's you know you got a lot of high bit io bandwidth in here as well so it's gonna be excited to see uh what applications we actually get to hear about using these and i'll be keeping a watch on it as well but i'd like to get back and in closing is that i'm actually glad that amd has gone into this market and release these i'm glad they're competing against intel and getting on every single front because right now AMD needs to keep that ball rolling, keep that snowball growing here and gain, keep gaining their momentum to continue to help themselves grow and invest back into R&D, et cetera, and kind of even, even grow even and make even better stuff that they are on top of what they've already been able to come out with on top of that Zen architecture. So I'm really kind of excited for AMD's future as well. I'm actually excited for the whole industry because as this competition starts up, it, it only helps make products better overall. It helps, you know, Intel, even with some of the stuff they've already released in the last year, they've really came out and, you know, addressed where AMD, you know, may have been where they might not have been or whatever. And now we even got, even on the desktop side, we got like 16, 18 cores, you know, in their high end um, i9s as stuff to compete with AMD and I'm excited to see where that goes in the future as well but let me know if you have any questions about these processors as well um, or if you find anything about where these are I'd love to read about where these processors are being used as well and see how AMD is putting them to work for other companies and helping other companies improve and be more effective at what they're doing as well so with that, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to support Gray Overload and help this channel to grow. I really do appreciate it. I'm very grateful for all the work that you guys do to help this channel grow. And until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Gray Overload. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe.